All right. <laughs> so everyone, welcome. This is Jeopardy! Industrial Control Systems Security Style. My name is Mary Brooks, and I am your host today. R.I.P. Trebek, I will not be nearly as good as you. So the rules of the game today are very simple. They're pretty much the same as for a normal game of Jeopardy, with a few distinctions. When the question comes up on the screen, you will have the chance to buzz in on your phone. Everyone, show me your phone and that you've got the buzzer ready to go. This is not a camera. Do not look at this sticker. Cool. After three seconds of waiting, the buzzer is going to unlock and you can shoot your shot by buzzing in to answer the question. I will be reading the question out loud, but you can cut me off if you decide that you know it faster than I can finish speaking. Um, you'll have a further 10 seconds after you buzz in to answer the question before the whole thing cuts off. So it's not a lot of time if you're not good under pressure, but it's plenty of time for it to get really awkward if you don't know the answer to the question. Um, when and you that's what we'll be waiting for. Yeah. When you buzz in, you have to finish answering within five seconds. Um, no take backs. If you start to say an answer, you got to continue with it. If someone answers incorrectly, everyone else gets a chance to buzz in. Um, and there will be two rounds, like in regular Jeopardy, plus a final Jeopardy question. There are only three <laughs> distinctions from regular Jeopardy. The first is that double Jeopardy is just an automatic doubling of points awarded. I don't know. I didn't make the system and no one wanted to create a bespoke Jeopardy application for me. So what, that's just what we're going to have to do. The next thing is that there is no panel of judges. So if you disagree with me on anything, the only way um, that you can get the points back is by fighting me for them. So just really angrily respond, you know, present proof, say I was there in the room and you're wrong. Angry, yes. angry, angry tweet at her. Yes, angry tweets. Um, you guys have better Twitter <laughs> followings than me. So Oof. I will not force it. Flip a so table. Can we, can we make Twitter the judges? Can we stand up a live Twitter poll? <laughs> no, yeah, because this is recorded. <laughs> well, live for now, not live for when they play it, Christopher. Also, if you can get your other teammates on the panel to tell me that I'm wrong, that's extra points, but obviously they have an incentive to tell you that you're wrong. Even if you're you're always wrong. Yeah. Just, so yeah. You get the point. All right. And then again, just a final reminder that the third difference is I do not have to finish reading the question before you can buzz in. Just go for it. Does that all make sense? Yes? Yeah, yes. sure. Awesome. Okay. So let me start by introducing our players today. Please wave when I say your name. The first is Chris Sistrunk a technical hey. manager at Mandiant's ICS OT security consulting team. Chris is prolific on Twitter, where he regular, regularly posts dad jokes as a service under hashtag DJAAS. Uh, give him a follow. He also updates folks regularly on his sock status. Chris, do you have any socks for us today? I'm wearing flip-flops right now, so that'd be no. Deeply disappointing. All right, not off to a good start there. Then we have Maggie Morganti, a product security researcher at Schneider Electric. It is a lesser known fact that Maggie was actually raised by a clan of feral engineers and trained under Chris Sistrunk in dad jokes as a service. So give her a follow on Twitter as well. As Chris goes back to his Luddite days of the scientific times from 1819, was it Chris? 1890. 1890, excellent. Last but not least, Tatiana Bolton. Give us a wave or a, a hook, as it were. She's the former cybersecurity policy lead at the Department of Homeland Security's CISA, not CISA, CISA, always CISA, right, Tatiana? That's correct. Always CISA. And I'll fight you about it. Don't cross Tatiana or the hook. And a policy director at the Cyberspace Solarium Commission. Um, Tatiana loves to ballroom dance, and she has not one, not two not three, but four children. I think that's one fewer than Chris Krebs. That is correct. There you go. That could have been a question. Could have been a question. Um, and before you ask, yes, she is my boss. And I did offer her a copy of today's questions in exchange for a raise, which she declined. So you're all on the same playing field. So finally, last thing is the prizes. So behold, here you have first prize. This is the joystick of honor. 
Beautiful. It moves in four directions. You can set it on your desk or something. I don't know. What's Chris's face right now? The hard hat of mediocrity with a promise. Oh, that blockchain God. will fix everything. And then finally, the supply vest of, you know, sadness, shame, <laughs> sadness. <laughs> I will really put this on it at the very end. And it says, I oh. lost. <laughs> so, the hard headed mediocrity is probably preferable. Don't be last. All right. Any questions? <laughs> no? Bonus points if we wear either of the last two during a real life compliance audit and take a picture. <laughs> yes, you will have to resend that. Um, you have to submit it retroactively to Twitter, and then I will automatically make you win. So it doesn't matter if it's like a year or two years from now, you'll automatically win. And what if you never participate in an on site audit? then what then you got to go in front of sis's headquarters with it oh god that's equally bad fair fair i will take <laughs> i will take that. all right all right without further ado we begin um i don't know chris maggie rock paper scissors for who starts yeah rock paper scissors shoot you oh. guys you guys Oh, this is terrible. All right, make us guess a number or something. Okay, okay, guess a number between uh, one and three. One? That's the worst. Three. Mary? One. <laughs> Tatiana? Two? It was two. You have to, oh, it was two. Oh, yeah. All right, so Tatiana, okay. you started off. I'll pick Alphabet <laughs> City for 400, Trebek. Right. ADX stands for what? We're really good at this. Chris? Analog digital converter? Not quite. Dang it. It's actually ADC, but. Tatiana? Uh, automated detection settings? No, but you're a lot closer. Maggie, anything? Oh, she's going to keep zero dollars. That's what she's That's fair. Do. Zero Smart. dollars. Skip. Smart. She's going to actually win. Okay. Automation and data exchange. Oh, telephone, PBX, ADX. Gotcha. So I realize I did completely neglect to introduce our categories. My significant, sincere apologies, and we will start with that. So first category, mm -hmm. ICS in the Middle East. Give me the industrial mm -hmm. control system related vulnerability or event that happened somewhere in the region loosely defined as the Middle East by Americans. Two, if only it were that easy, you will tell me the simple solution to fix all your ICS problems. Third is Alphabet City. You are going to give me the full phrase of the abbreviation or acronym. Fourth is Colonial Pipeline in the USG. That may or may not be Tatiana's uh, sole category, depending on NDA restrictions by our other two players. And finally, the last is Dune. Apparently, it's mandatory to read this book if you care about uh, industrial control systems. Is that true? Never read it. Never read it. I read <laughs> it. Oh, all right. All right. Well, here goes. Tatiana, why don't you say the next one? Oh, God. Well, I picked so well on the first one. All right, well, let's go Colonial Pipeline on the USG for 200, Trebek. So the ransomware targeted Colonial's IT, it is believed this trend in which business computers are linked into control systems that contributed to the pipeline shutdown. It's really easy. Yeah, I know. That's I mean, um, what is IT OT convergence? I Yay! think she got the yeah, answers totally. in advance. She got the answers in advance. No, I told you I held it hostage for a raise and she didn't give it to me. So I can't buy shoes and she can't answer the questions. Works out. <laughs> Tatiana, next to you. I'll go Colonial Pipeline of the USG for 300, please. New guidance was issued following the Colonial Pipeline hack. To whom in the federal government are pipeline operators required to report a breach? Maggie. Yes, eh? Wait, do you say ah, so that or TSA? Oh my God, no, no, it was, yeah. Oh, Mary. I did this third. 
Yeah. Sorry. You, you missed Scratch. it. That's sad. That's sad. Scratch. I was definitely going to say scissor. So if you were definitely going to say it, Tatiana, well, why don't you pick the next? <laughs> to be fair, if there's an error, it goes back to the previous person picking. I will go Colonial Pipeline and the USG for 400, please. Colonial Pipeline had not implemented this login verification system for its accounts when it was breached, leading some in Congress to criticize it harshly. For those with NDAs reporting reports that it had not done this. Tatiana? Uh, what is two-factor authentication? I think Christopher's That's that. Must speak, must, must remain silent. Oh no. Okay, what is, if only it were that easy for 200, Trebek? This term is a measure of how quickly a system can be brought back online following an incident. Chris. So is it a term or an abbreviation? Can I ask that question? Uh, it was a term, but if it's a correct uh, abbreviation, we'll get it. It's a uh, uh, mean time between failure, MTBF. God, you're thinking way too sophisticated. I, I think you're right, <laughs> but it's really simple. Can you, can you extend? Uh, time, uh, I mean, yeah. I think resilience, just bringing it back online. What? No one uses that term. I think you term. should give it to, uh, yeah, I think you I should think give it to there. Chris. That's yeah. fair. Chris's answer is correct. <laughs> resilience. Resilience would mean it would never fail in the first place. That's true. It makes you feel better. When I saw the ADX for Alphabet City, I thought it was supposed to be airports. An air, airport code, yeah. <laughs> I was sitting there like, ADX. All right, I'm All right, negative you, 200. Chris. All right, uh, let's, uh, let's do, if only we were that easy for 500. All right, here goes. Don't look at me, Kaspersky or McAfee. This practice warns certain scanning software to skip it. Chris? What is antivirus? Antivirus. Exclusions. Exclusion list, okay. Same thing. Well, you put that in the do not scan folder. Uh, yeah. All right. Um, if only we're that easy, 400. NIST has warned against this practice, explaining that system security should not depend on the secrecy of the implementation or its components. Maggie. Oh, uh, security by obscurity? Ding. Ooh. To you, Maggie. I am going to do... Uh... We'll keep rolling. Uh, if only it were that easy for 300. Just blink. It doesn't really work to I in ICS. Maggie? Um, patch. Sorry, I saw just blank it and I clicked because I was like, it can only be patch or air gap. <laughs> Maggie, next question. Uh, if only it were that easy for 100. <laughs> That's awesome. oh. you, Maggie, for double the points. Can you do it? <laughs> yes. And to you again. We'll do, we'll do June for 500, just because I like being completely right. clueless. This one's actually really hard. I don't know. I've never read oh, it myself. All right. Oh, good. The first draft of Dune actually came out of a nonfiction magazine article written by the author about what? Tatiana? Uh, what is the uh, non-hierarchical hyperlinked uh, virtualized blockchain? That, that's a wild answer. <laughs> the old college try. Was she incorrect? Yes, <laughs> that was definitely incorrect. Distinctly. It was about sand dunes. He, huh. he learned about a sand dune experiment and he thought, let me write a whole book about a sand dune. Uh, wow. 
Wow, wow, wow. All right, to you, Maggie. Uh, let's go ICS in the Middle East for 100. All right. Do you guys have security clearances? A worm discovered in 2010 is believed to have been targeted this. Chris? What is Natan's uranium enrichment facility? Thing. And to you again. Okay, so let's do ICS in, no, no, Alphabet City 500. What does MATLAB stand for? Chris? I've never known what it is, but I'm going to guess what is Math Laboratory? So close. Any other takers? Uh, I don't want to wear the vest of shame. Yeah. <laughs> go big or go I home. Don't really close. <laughs> Turns out Matrix Laboratory. Who knew? So oh, close. Reporting actually, Chris to his PE. His PE I never had to use it. I <laughs> used MathCAD. So. Should have asked that one instead. Okay. All right, back to you, Chris. Oh, even though I lost? Yeah, default. Uh, all right, fine. Alphabet City for 300. Seda. I'm hitting it. Yes. Okay, supervisory. What is supervisory control and data acquisition? Ooh. Chris, to you. All right. White on rice. Let's see. Oh, I'm above board. All right. Um, what is Alphabet City 200? Or two. DCS. Chris. What is distributed control system? And to you again. Alphabet City 100. PLC. Maybe you guys can get <laughs> Going as fast as I can go. Uh, what is programmable logic controller? All right. It's Coming for you, Mags. Coming for you, Mags. Um, <laughs> I'm like hitting it as fast as I can. And you're I know. So, me. so was I. Yeah, I have a gigabit fiber. I'm over here. here. I have a pirate book. <laughs> I think um, the pirate book impedes your, your hitting. Yeah, I'm just. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's go for ICS in the Middle East 500. And I'm not even sure I can answer this question depending on what it is. This product made by Schneider Electric was the target. Hey, attacked. Chris. What is Triconics? Damn. We don't have any Ooh, Schneider representatives. Yeah, man. <laughs> Did you know it though? Of course she knew I it. Mean, I mean, uh, they never let us forget. <laughs> never forget, never remember. Okay. You, um, let's just keep going down the road. Let's see. ICS in the Middle East 400. 2012 cyber attack against this company reportedly, Chris. It is, uh, um, what is, it was a ransomware attack called. Oh, come on, five seconds is up. Oh, yeah, my brain, just, oh. my brain just lost Maggie. it. Maggie. My brain just uh, lost it. Saudi Aramco? Oh. Well, that was the yes. company. That wasn't yes. the ransomware. Yeah, yeah it was the company. company. It asked oh, for the company. Ransomware's a different was, one. I thought it was asking for the ransomware name. Maggie has no qualms about sliding and taking that one. That's no. Maggie. None. I'm going to go with ICS in the Middle East for 300. 2020, Iranian hikers repeatedly breached the HMI of several water facilities in this Middle Eastern country. Chris. What is Israel? And to you again. All right. ICS in the Middle East, 200. Reportedly, hackers who breached Iran's nuclear facilities in 2009 and 10 blared the, thun the song Thunderstruck by this Australian rock band, Maggie. ACDC? Is there any other Australian rock band worth mentioning? I don't know. Sure. I didn't read the question. You know, I thought you were Australian. I mean. Well, All right. You got the board? Got the board. I've also got a lead. Mm. Nurture that. that. So I can nurture, that. Like a nurture small this. Topic. We're coming for you, Megs. I'm going to go 
and pray with Colonial Pipeline for 100. Teresa? See what it is. It's 2002. This sub agency of the Department of Homeland Security, Tatiana. What is the TSA? That one's the TSA. So smart. So smart. So to smart. you, Pirate Hook smart. boss. Not me, but the plan. Sorry. No. What is uh, the Colonial Pipeline of the USG for 500 Trebek? This entity in the Department of the Treasury forbids ransomware payments to any entity sanctioned. Chris? This entity in, oh, it's in the Department, the Department of Treasury. I don't know. I just lost points. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, who says you can't send money to terrorists? That's a lot of points to lose. I'm not going to guess. I don't yeah. care. It's, <laughs> those are internet points. Well, one of us is going to have to wear the best. Right, Chris. OFAC. Uh, yeah. Never heard of it. <laughs> it's okay. Most people try to steer clear of it. Uh, so I think, Tatiana, you're guessing? Uh, what is Dune for 400, Trebek, please? Before publishing the Dune series, author Frank Herbert spent time working in this role on several political campaigns. Tatiana? What is Speechwriter? Yes! Oh, this don't have anything to do with control systems. <laughs> no, but they have I, everything to do with Dune. No, you know who yeah. we blame for this this whole category Price. is things we can blame John Hulquist for. Yeah, that's true. We're blaming John. <laughs> well, continue to ask questions and perhaps that will become increasingly pertinent to the categories. Uh, Dune for 300, Trebek. In December 2015, the APT sandworm, Maggie. Black energy. Which? Oh, it's not just black energy. I know, but I knew that's what they had. We're going for basic here. Okay? You want extra points, Maggie? Come on. Extra points for fill both. Us in, fill us in, Chris. What other black than energy black energy? Three. Oh, well. That would have, we would have accepted that too. All right, Dune for 200, Trebek. This one's Maggie. All oh, right, that's Maggie. Yeah, yeah. easy. Dune for 200, Trebek. <laughs> Arguably the most iconic creatures from the series are the sandworms. Sandworm is the colloquial name, Chris? APT 28. Oh. Which is? Oh, Russia. Uh, and Russian government, yes, 74455, yeah. <sighs> I have the book the right there. Dune. Uh, Dune 100 is the only choice. Oops. In the Dune series, this is the universe's most valuable commodity, Chris. The spice must flow. You haven't read the book. I've seen the movie. Oh, close enough. I've seen the memes. I was going to say water. So we have a first half winner is Maggie. And we will now be copying these over because the, day, the game does not allow you to do two at once. Oh. So we call this our commercial break. All right. So I've now re entered your points. So right now, in the first half of the game, Maggie is winning with 1,800 fictional points. Chris following at a decent lag behind her with 700, and Tatiana with a royal 200 points, cruising for the best of shame. Oh, she's uh, on the we, beach. She's a pirate already. Are. <laughs> <laughs> this one might be what we call cashing it in. Um, <laughs> all right. That so we'll allow good. the person with the fewest amount of points to lead off. Tatiana, uh, what thanks. would you like to pick? Oh, sorry. Uh, I should um, announce them, actually. Yes, please. So today we've got the OG, the Aurora Project, <laughs> which, fun fact, has been declassified. No worries there, team. Number two, going boom. I, I tell you the victim and you tell me the type of attack. And if it was malware, I'm going to need the specific type of malware. Then we've got whose country is it anyway? Top level domain version. The cyber apocalypse in which rich, wealthy men tend to tell us about all the disasters that new technologies will bring. And framework potpourri in case anyone's a lawyer and just really, really likes government frameworks. 
So Tatiana, it's to you. I will go with the cyber apocalypse for 200. Former NSA director Michael Hayden had blamed this infamous leaker of classified information for lighting the fuse of the destruction of the modern internet. Tatiana? Who is Edward Snowden? Yeah. To you again? The cyber apocalypse for 300, please. When Elon Musk warned that scientists were summoning the demon and said he feared human extinction, Tatiana? Was AI? You've got the machine board learning. Machine <laughs> <laughs> They're the same uh, thing, right? Am I the only one? Um, cyber okay, cyber apocalypse for 400, please. It's going to be my only category. This phenomenon was described by Albert Einstein as spooky action at a distance. touching it quantum entanglement oh quantum entanglement i should know that all right to you tatiana cyber apocalypse for 500 please this nasa scientist warned that space pollution could trigger a cascading series of collisions in low earth orbit rendering satellites unusable for generations the effect is named after him. Nope. Kessler, the Kessler effect. Oh. And to you again, Tatiana? I'm gonna go for the same category 100. This individual claimed to get hacked, you need someone with 197 IQ and he needs Maggie. Donald Trump? I remember that because that was the day I learned I was smart. <laughs> Always good to have one of those days. <laughs> All right, you've got control of the board. Okay. Uh, bu 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 bu. Uh, let's go whose country is it anyways for 100. All right. So remember, this is a uh, top level domain version, but so this will all have to do with TLDs. This American nonprofit coordinates and manages the domain name system. Tatiana? Why does something's nothing blockchain? No. Blockchain's the answer to everything, right? I, I knew it was, uh, I knew the abbreviation, I just couldn't. Yeah. Oh, we'll accept it's abbreviations. Uh, we'll it's accept okay. Abbreviations. It's okay. <laughs> we accept them because honestly, whoever knows what the full word is, anyways. Oh. Wow, that's. Uh, well, in the uh, last uh, round, we had to know that. That's true. I reserve the right to change my opinion at a moment's notice. Rest in peace, Dan Kaminsky. He was one of the key holders. Yeah. Um, Maggie, back to you. We'll do uh, going boom for 100. 200, the 2018 Winter Olympics in South Korea. Name the malware. What? Oh. Don't think too hard. No, it's um. Well, oh, it's not the Korean one. Yeah. Maggie, to you again. Uh, same for two hundred. Riviera Beach Water Utility. The type of hack will do here. You don't have to get specific. Ransomware. To you again. Same for 300. Bowman Avenue Dam in Rye, New York. Chris? It's just uh, scanning, I think. Yeah. yeah. Basically reconnaissance. Yeah. Chris, to you? All right, uh, going boom for 400, please. If you get this one right, Maggie won't be twice as far ahead as you. 
the Ukrainian power grid. Chris? This is uh, known by two names, Crash Override or End Destroyer. Either would have done it. And to you again? 500, please, same category. Okay. Maruchi Water Services and Tahamakalusa Canal. Chris? Uh, insider threat or disgruntled employee. I'm all right. I'm just here. I should have a drink. You should have a drink. There's no reason you can't have drinks. I only have a cup, although maybe there's alcohol out there somewhere. I have water. We'll have to save the uh, the other beverages for later. It's not five o'clock yet. Yeah. It's five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> Yeah. All, All right, right. Uh, uh, Aurora, par Aurora Project for 100, please. Researchers at this location famously blew up the 27 ton Maggie. Idaho National Lab. Did you work there or something? No. I worked at Oak Ridge. Oak Ridge. Lab. Tennessee, right? Yeah. Okay. So the board's yours. Uh, same for 200. This is the year that the Aurora Project occurred. Chris. 2007. Aurora Project for 300, please. 100 it is. In 2014, Aurora was accidentally declassified. Chris. Freedom of Information Act. Yes. Quite a mix up. Yeah. Just great times. Quite a mix up. <laughs> Quite the mix up. Just like three times. We enjoyed reading the results. So thank you, Mike Asante. Rest in peace. Aurora Project for number 400. Yeah, all right, 400. The number of lines of code that were used in Aurora to blow up the generator. Chris. I think it was 19. Nope. Dang it. Maggie. 27. Nope. Tatiana. I'm not losing 400 points. <laughs> It was none. What? what? That's... How's that possible? Uh, well, you might find the next one, but keep going. ask the next one. They had to reprogram the Switzer Engineering Labs relay. To fix that, right? To, to make it go bad. Anyway, they had to use, anyway. All right, 500, five, uh, Aurora. Five. The type of vulnerability that was weaponized in Aurora, Chris. Well, there could be two answers. It had default passwords in the relay, or also the, uh, the vulnerabilities uh, was being able to change the settings with no authentication. I mean, with I a little more de de default credentials or a password. I actually don't know if that was an additional one. I was looking for something slightly different. Um, if you can Google it and show me that, I will. Okay. Well, um, the other vulnerability was is uh, it was had to do with electrical engineering. Um, yes. So it was uh, closing a breaker out of out of sync. For that reason, we said it had no lines of code because it was just closing it out of sync. Oh. Yeah, they had to change the code in the in the in the uh, in the in the relay. Okay, so we'll give you guys both points back for that. She's such a benevolent dictator. That's no, I'm just not going to fight with people who may have investigated <laughs> it. <laughs> oh, we just saw uh, at the time I was at the power company, we had to go change all of our passwords. Oh. And yank all remote access. It's probably a good thing. So long ago. Um, what country is it anyway for 200? TLD for this country is abbreviated dot CN. Maggie, no, Chris, sorry. What is China? <laughs> extra yeah. points. I decide you get extra points. That was really good, by the way. Yeah, it was. Right. It was really good. Was, yeah. uh, that, you good, Chris? <laughs> yeah. Uh, what, what, whose country is it anyway for 300? The TLD for the British Indian Ocean Territory is this abbreviation. Very, very popular with boutique companies. Tatiana? Dot IO? 
It does not stand for input output. <laughs> to you, Pirate Hook. Whose country is it anyway for 400? The TLD AQ covers the region south of latitude 60 degrees south. There's like only one thing south of 60. There's one thing south. Chris. What is Antarctica? Good job. All right, all right, all right, uh, that was, I was thinking uh, that, but I didn't want to risk my 400 points. I risked it. All right, whose country is it anyway? For five hundred. How well do you know the I hope there's a I hope there's a third round. <laughs> Popular, Popular among AI programmers, the TLD.ai belongs to this territory. This is one I have to answer. Now nah, you don't have to answer it, but no okay, one else good. you get first dibs. Uh, well, doesn't he first have to pick how many points? No, it's, no, it's for a, it's for a thousand if you read the screen. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's why I'm at nine hundred, Chris. I can't read or answer questions. <laughs> Maggie, can we get a pet cameo? Ah. Oh, it's a baby good boy. <laughs> All right, no takers on this one. Do I get extra points for the pet cameo? Yeah, I think so. There you go. Turns out it's Anguilla. Sure it is. Popular. I bet. A sure. Yeah. We all knew that, right? We all knew nope. that. Yeah. yeah. I can tell you take it. I, it, was, it was right at the tip of my tongue. If I saw my control system trying to talk to that TLD, I'd be worried. Yeah. Oh, Unless you were an Anguilla. I mean, what's an Anguilla? Probably like a beach, right? Something nice. They probably got substations. Maybe somebody's on vacation and they're remoting in. It's not, you know, China. I mean, how many times though have you logged onto a site that's got the .ai extension? I don't know. Never. Oh, I see them all the time. No. Oh. They're getting increasingly popular. It's like a little boutique stamp of. Might be hacked, Mary. I don't <laughs> run the companies. She might be a. Uh... <laughs> She might not even be real. This might be all. It might be a bot. It's a deep fake. Deep fake. I just logged into R Street AI with my. Oh, friend. so I get to. <laughs> let's see. I guess it's still my turn. It's your turn. This is going to be a all super right. fun one if you like. Framework research. potpourri for one hundred. Arguably the most popular security framework. This government-driven setup has a framework core. Chris. Cybersecurity framework. I. NIST. NIST. Chris, do you? Right, uh, uh, framework potpourri for 200. This proprietary framework models the behavior of cyber adversaries. Chris? The MITRE ATT&CK framework. Um, framework potpourri for 300. This 2002 act, updated in 2014, gives DHS official authority over the federal government's IT practices. Tatiana, is this your like job? I want to guess, but I'm not going to hit the button. I mean, I, I don't want to. No? Sure. Tatiana? We'll go for it. Um, the, I don't know. The DHS Act, that's not, that was in 2003. The cybersecurity something. Isma. The Federal Fisma. Information Security Management Act. Fisma. All right, Chris, to you. Right. Framework potpourri for 400. See? A set of standards focused on protecting the bulk power grid. Chris. Yeah, it's going to be NERC SIP. And the last one. 500. The International Series of Standards for Industrial Control Systems. Chris. ISA 62443. Well deserved 500 points. All right. So it is the final Jeopardy time, AKA final facto, because apparently they don't have the rights to Jeopardy. So you can either enter your wager on your own device or you can tell me and I will enter it myself.
Chris, we're waiting on you. I, I know. I'm doing some math here. Go ahead. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. Oh, ho, ho. As Snyder would say. Uh, all right. All right. You have 30 seconds for this question. Leave my hand. This security model, which happens to be a homophone with a major chicken processing company, includes one or more demilitarized zones in its architecture and defines different levels of critical infrastructure. Tatiana, I'll start with you. I think that's I just said blockchain. You just tell me what you said. I have to reveal it. Oh, uh, oops. I, I just said, said that you got it right. Well, you have to hit click C answer. What is Tyson. We'll fix that in a minute. All right. <laughs> Maggie, what did you say? Purdue model. That is correct. You wagered 2300. And Chris, Purdue model as well. The winner is Team Chris. Team Chris. So overcoming the adversity of the NDAs, come back. Impressive, impressive. Cheers to you, sir. Really heroic. I didn't even read that Dune book. I'm I have, might have to read it. There's supposed to be a new Dune movie, maybe. Just watch the movies. Zendaya's yeah, in it. Movies. Yeah. Yeah. That's all you have to do. All right. So Chris wins with 7,200 magic points, Maggie with 46, and Tatiana, I will hand deliver you the vest. That's sad. I'm actually, I'm actually very excited for this hat. Yeah, because you talked about blockchain in your research. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. I, I go get a blockchain people. hat and I have to wear the vest of sadness and <laughs> inferiority. I, I need that controller. What do I get to control with it, though? You you want? It's actually fully functional. Um, so you I bought it out of China, though. Uh, so well, I'm probably you, controlling something around the world. Check it before you plug it into your industrial control system somewhere. I'm gonna hook but, it up to um, my barbecue pit. What? I'm gonna Ooh. hook it up to my barbecue pit. There's a. You could turn them. You could flip the ribs using it. Nice. Oh, are we invited? Like sure, come on down. A little barbecue session. There's a direct flight from DC to, to Jackson. I will come for barbecue. <laughs> There's no good barbecue in DC. None. Ooh, no, I have a good they've barbecue got good barbecue. For you. They've got barbecue there. You have, to drive out to, you have to drive out to Purcellville. It's called Mugs Barbecue, and it is amazing. Mugs with two G's? No monks like O like M O N K S. Oh, okay. Super good. Super, super good. All right. Well, this concludes our industrial control systems Jeopardy that kind of turned into regular IT Jeopardy. Um, and thank you again to our players, Chris, Maggie, and Tatiana. Stay safe out there, y'all, and uh, have a great day. <laughs>